Champions School of Real Estate. I'm Rita Santa Maria, the owner, founder of Champions School of Real Estate. And it is always my pleasure to say hello and to thank you for your business and to let you know what a pleasure it is every month to be able to have our free interviews. And the purpose of our free interviews with our champion superstars is to let you see how you can do it. You will definitely be able to identify with the people that you see here at the table. You will have some of the same fears, you will have some of the same concerns, and yet you'll see how they were able to overcome that, build a great business, and actually have a wonderful life and uh, be an entrepreneur. So today I'm just really excited in that I chose two of our champions that have been in the business for just two years, and in two years they really came to the top of their business. And um, I want to let you know that when they're talking, the wonderful nuggets that they give you are good information pieces for you to write down. So right now, I hope you have your iPad or your pen and paper because Adrian and Matt are going to give you some wonderful, wonderful uh, ideas on how to grow your business. I do want to say hello to our president, Kimberly Didalowitz, and uh, say that after 35 years of growing Champion School of Real Estate at our annual retreat, I announced that Kimberly would be doing the day-to-day -day business at Champion School of Real Estate. I love to say I'm not retiring. I would not know what to do if I retired. But I have other things that are on my agenda that I want to do in order to continue to grow Champion School of Real Estate and as well have a little more free time. But hello, Kim, I know you're watching and uh, 21 years in the business, I can tell you, she absolutely knows what's going on at Champion School of Real Estate and I'm so pleased and happy for that. Hello, Austin. Hello, San Antonio. Hello, uh, Dallas, Plano, <laughs> Fort Worth, our three campuses in Houston. Those of you joining us on Facebook Live and certainly those of you that are on live broadcast. So happy to have you here today. So let me start by introducing our two wonderful guests today, Adrian Leonard, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh I my really gosh, it's our it. pleasure. Thank you for everything. And she's one of our wonderful students from the Plano region, the North Dallas area. And we got to meet her husband this morning, Terry, who came down with her. Fantastic, dynamic duo team. She was just telling me that she's considering and thinking that her daughter may join her in the business. Yeah, yes, and my husband. And your husband. It's very common, very typical, that families love to go into business together. I wanted Adrienne to be here today because she was the 2018 Rookie of the Year for Keller Williams Plano. Yeah, yes. So just less than a year ago, you got that honor. Yeah, yes. And we're going to talk about how she got that honor and what she did to go straight to the top in such a short time. So hello Plano, hello KW, Keller Williams. And then we have Matt Chelp. And Matt is with Caldwell Banker in the Sci Fair area. And uh, we have a mutual friend, his office manager, Marlene Johnson. Hi, is Marlene. such a sweetheart. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to Marlene about our monthly superstar top producer interviewees. And I said, I need a fairly new in the business person. And she said, you have to talk to Matt. Because Matt has done something that a lot of agents don't do. And that is he specializes in renters, leasing. Now, he also is going to tell us how it springboards into first-time homebuyers. But... Um, 
We are so happy to have both of you here. And in fact, you've got an award uh, in your company for being top in leasing. That's correct. And if I'm thinking correctly, it's been two years now for you, right, Matt? It has been, yeah. Okay. okay. So let's just start right off. And I love to always ask this question because you never know why did you decide to go into real estate? And I'll just start with Adrian because I'm looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, was a stay-at-home mom, and during tax season, I worked just during, from January to April 15th. I did tax returns for a lot of individuals, but also a lot of real estate agents um, and entrepreneurs. Um, as I looked at it, I thought, wow, this is really something I would love to do one day. I love um, the activity in their life and their income, their expenses, their depreciation, just everything about their tax return, which most people don't say they love taxes, but I love taxes. <laughs> And I thought, I'm going to do that one day. Um, so about five years ago, my daughter and I uh, said, hey, let's get our real estate license. And if you Google that, it's really hard to figure out how to get your real estate license. <laughs> <laughs> you need to call Champions. <laughs> yes. So I was recommended uh, to come to Champions. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting right where you are in Plano to this day, two years ago. No way. Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh my goodness. There are a lot of people identifying with you right, right now. Right, right. So is your daughter in real estate now? She's licensed she's studying or getting now. licensed? Yeah, yeah, okay. she's getting licensed. Okay. So um, she uh, she's just we're gonna explode. Yes, so she's you are. amazing. So Well, I want our students to know that Adrian has like twenty five years in accounting. Yeah, yes. And I also want you to know she's from Mississippi. <laughs> and I love her accent, but before we started, she said, okay, I'm from Mississippi, and sometimes my accent can't be understood. And we love it. It's very <laughs> thank beautiful. You, thank you. <laughs> so 25 years in accounting. Mm -hmm. Just right off the cuff, what are some expenses that our students uh, can know about? that they do daily that can be legitimate write-off expenses? Mm -hmm. Well, what you're doing right now and taking your courses is the first thing. Um, that's part of growing your business. And um, now I can't talk for a tax accountant because no. I'm in real estate. Just um, as an agent. <laughs> yeah, yes, as an agent. Um, you can go forward and look into your mileage, your phone, your computer. Um, everything that makes your business grow, your advertising, your um, part of your entertainment, um, their, your office, um, your office expenses. There's, there's just a lot of things that sound like a lot of overwhelming expenses, but you can keep those costs down and kind of lead by income with your business. And then from there, um, you'll just, you'll be able to go so much further um, as far as growing your income because you're going to be able to budget. So, And we're going to talk about a true business plan in mm -hmm. order to get your business going in a yeah, little yes. bit. So those are some good ideas. And I have to say to Adrian, you are so very right about, as an accountant, looking at real estate agents, information they sent over, and said, hey, I think I want to go into this business. We've had a number of accountants mm -hmm. go into real estate. Yeah. Now, what about you, Matt? What was your defining moment? But before you answer, <laughs> I know that you grew up in real estate. So I tell did. us about I that. I did. Um, so my father is a broker associate at Cobalt Banker also, right? Um, and he's pretty much been with the company nonstop since I was in elementary school. Okay. Um, and so I've known Marlene since I was a child, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I used to go to the to the real estate office to sell my Boy Scout popcorn and, okay. and, and all of that, right? So um, I've known all of these veteran agents my whole life. Yeah, I'm um, sure they love and, you. And, you know, I have, I think, their respect, uh, but I have a lot of respect for them, you know? So um, 
I think I, I, I went to school at Baylor, Sick and Bears, um, and I was looking for what I wanted to do. Uh, studied marketing at Baylor and was coming back and I said, well, I know all of these folks made real estate look easy. That was initially That's kind right. of a, kind of a turn off. I was like, I want to do something a little a little more challenging. Newsflash: real estate super challenging. Yes. Um, <laughs> super challenging. <laughs> um, but I was I was kind of trying to find my path, as a lot of millennials still are. Yes. Um, I was applying to law schools, and uh, I got offered a full ride to go back to Baylor for law school. Congratulations! And I thought I was going to do that. Yes. Uh, so I was giving that some pretty serious thought, and. Eventually, I just wasn't really sure if I wanted to be in a courtroom as a lawyer all day. Um, but I, I came back here to, to tour schools, and I visited the brokerage and sat down with the manager and was just kind of, uh, you know, what do I do? These are my options. I, 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 I think I might like this career, uh, but I, I also have this really great opportunity, and I'm trying to, to, to weigh everything. And, um, you know, she just said, you always have a spot here. You know, uh, and and I, I, I kind of gave it some more thought, and this was how I felt like I could go out, be with people, help people. Uh, you know, I, there was all of the get to make your own schedule kind of things that exactly. uh, um, played into it. But I I knew when I when I left after that trip that uh, I I was not going to go to law school, you had made and, your <laughs> and and that that desk that was here uh, waiting for me was was going to be mine. So. What a I took smart it and ran. <laughs> he is able to go to law school at Baylor and decides to go into real estate. I'm sure you made Cola Bankers Day when you said yes. And certainly your family, it's so much fun to have a family mm -hmm. business. As Adrian said, you know that everybody has your back and yeah. uh, you all. But you're not a team with your family. You have your separate business. Is that correct or uh, not? So we do. Uh, when I when I onboarded, um, it, we were we were just individuals. We have uh -huh. formed the Shelf Realty team now. Uh -huh. So, okay. um, so you that's, are a team that now. we are a team. Okay. That's that's my dad, myself, uh, and and we've just onboarded one other agent, Lee, with okay, us. Um, and she's a rock star. So good. So on the Shelf team, we know that you really enjoy working with leases, renters, those that need a place for short term typically. And yet so many agents don't like that. They don't like to lease. Tell us how you made that your forte and uh, and why. Yeah, um, I think a, a really important piece of advice that I kind of got when I when I came on uh, at first was just take what's available to you, right? Um, right. And attitude. Um, so I knew a lot of the agents in our office uh, at first would get lease listings and you get a lot of unrepresented traffic that comes through those um, and a lot mm -hmm. of online just sign calls and things. Um, and so I reached out and I said, if y'all have these listings and you get leads from them and you, you don't, you're not going to have time in your schedule, those are emails you just wouldn't have answered, mm -hmm. uh, send those to me. Just forward me the leads. I'll work them. I'll go show your house. I'll get it leased for you. Um, and, and I'll take the tenant side, right? Uh, and, and it was kind of, you know, little by little, it adds up, right? But yeah, absolutely. Uh, most people don't want to lease forever, right? Um, so take those people. Put them into the CRM. Keep in touch. Uh, you know, they they get all of our mail outs. They they get phone calls once every few months. That type of thing, and they remember. Let's talk about CRM. But first of all, I just want to say I hope our students heard and wrote down that when you find a renter for a lease and they're leasing a house or an apartment. What is the process? Do you mind, in a nutshell, telling our students the process that you do? Yeah, sure. Um, usually it's an infinitely shorter process than buying, right? Uh, so that's kind of the appeal, is it's a, it's a much quicker, quicker open and close, close uh -huh. right? Um, so I will go out, meet somebody at a house, everybody gets one free shot with me, so um, they don't have to come to my office first or anything. 
Uh, you know, if that's the one, great. This is going to be super easy. If not, then I, I come equipped with, well, these are the other similar houses in the area that we could go see today, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and then pretty much if they like it, they're going to send in an application um, with copies of their, you know, proof of income and, and their IDs and the, the agent who's on the listing side will either say that they're approved or, or not. Um, and then once they're approved, we, we negotiate the lease, which in the residential leasing market, at least in Houston, there's not much negotiation room um, in, really <laughs> um, in, the, in the rental side of things. So you pretty much take what you can get. Um, and then they're probably moving in two or three weeks later. And as soon as uh, keys are exchanged, checks are cut and, and you're you done. You get your money. There you go. So, for sure, it's a faster way of getting paid. Faster way to get paid less money, but yes. Right. <laughs> and that's why those agents are happy to send the referral over to you because I just, we know that an experienced agent that's very active with a number of buyers they're working with, they would love to take care of that tenant and find them a rental. And yet they're thinking, do I do this or do I do that? So at the beginning, everybody does both. We do all of it. Mm -hmm. And yet you said, hey, I can get my career started like this. But then you were very smart to say, and I can just keep doing this. Because as you mentioned before we were on camera today, he gets money in the mail on a regular basis <laughs> with his Surprise renters. checks. Surprise yep. checks. So that is just really a wonderful side of our business that we don't talk about very often. Let's go to the CRM that you mentioned. Um, CRM has to do with your referral basis, people that you keep up with. So Adrian, do you use a program? Do you do it yourself? What is your process with keeping up with your prospects? So um, the very first thing I did when I came into the business is I hired an assistant. And um, she does all my marketing and I do my follow-up calls daily. 50% um, of my business comes from open houses. Oh, wow. At wow. Keller Williams, Plano, I was trained by some amazing open house agents. And I shadowed them and then I just took off from there. So my first transact, my first three transactions were from open house. So I um, see what they're looking for. If they're looking for the house that I'm in, I will upfront ask them, what do you think about this house? Would you like to make an offer? And if not, what is your criteria? What are you looking for? Would you mind sharing your information with me? I'd like to do a follow-up with you and help you. So I rarely let someone become an orphan. Uh, they don't just go away from me reaching out to them to mm -hmm. see if I can help them. Unless they've said, oh, guess what? We found something. And I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Sad for me, but happy for you. Mm -hmm. And they go forward, and, and I let them live their life that way. I may still send them something down the road, but I just don't, um, I don't get discouraged if they're not letting me help them. So um, I follow up with letters, phone calls, emails, and text, and that's the first week. And after that, I will follow up with just marketing monthly or quarterly, depending on who I'm reaching out to. Well, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, yes. And first of all, Matt and I both went, wow, wow. on the yeah. open houses. <laughs> Half of her business comes from open houses. For sure, with the open house signs, I just want to make a point to our students. Be sure you have your name on all those open house signs. Uh, most definitely you need your company name, mm -hmm. but you need to have your name. That's like free advertising all through the neighborhood yeah, yes. to get them to the open house. But, um, and I love that you added, but I always, of course, try to sell them the one I'm in first mm -hmm. because we know that 
there's sometimes our negative comments that agents only do open houses to get buyers. Mm -hmm. Well, that just doesn't even make sense. I mean, how much easier and nicer would it be than someone walking into the open house wants to buy that house? Mm -hmm. But if they don't, now you've got people to add to your contact list. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty remarkable that the first week you're sending them all that different uh, way of communication. Yes. So they've really gotten to know you mm -hmm. by that first and, week. And I want them to know how hard I'm going to work for them. I'm mm -hmm. not you know, a lazy listing. I am going to be out there and put you on a criteria, put you on the portal, follow up with you, see how you like it, um, see what what homes that, why you're discouraged by some of the homes that are coming mm -hmm. to you, and, and what is it more? Is it can I send you to a different area that you might consider because it sounds like your criteria doesn't quite fit one area of the city, can we move to another? So I've lived in Plano for 37 years, as long as I've been married, um, and know the, uh, the whole North Dallas area you very grow, well. You know yeah, well. yes, my husband went to SMU, grew up in Dallas, uh, we know the area very well. So I can get an idea of what they're looking for, price point, um, their whole criteria and kind of direct them maybe a little bit better than what they're thinking, where they're working, and guide them. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what they have to say so that I can do my fa my best to go forward in helping them find. Now, do you keep need. packets of your marketing material with you just so that when you meet a prospect, you've got this nice package mm -hmm. to give sort of as an introduction, not just your business card, mm -hmm. but here's my package. Mm -hmm. So what I do there is when I'm doing an open house, I go into the city information and the neighborhood information, and I will have flyers of what's available there. Um, as far as my own personal information, it is um, the, my flyer. Um, I have a specific lender that I use that they will do my flyers, and so they, which I'm sure you will learn this and it's so wonderful, they will put their lending information along with what the house payment will be, whether you go FHA, VA, conventional, 3.5%. Uh, Such great information. It's wonderful because they know what their house payment is mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. So he is, is representing his lending, but I'm showing my knowledge of what I know about the house mm -hmm. and hopefully helping them to afford the home. Um, and there, there is also the 0% uh, down that he can assist them with as well, depending on the house Love price. It. Work with your lenders. They are happy, happy, Huge. happy to make it a partnership. Yeah, yes. So, Matt, tell us about your way of keeping in touch with your centers of influence, your prospects. What yeah. is your approach? Yeah. What do you do? Um, so, we have... We have been all over the CRM map, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think if there's a software out there, we might we have given it. it a shot, right? <laughs> um, and maybe we don't give some of them a long enough shot, and then we realize back <laughs> that yeah, that, that so maybe that, that software there. was actually pretty good, you know. Yeah. But um, so right now we use um, his Exact Contact, uh, which is kind of old school CRM. You know, it's not the prettiest looking thing, but mm -hmm. it it's powerful. Um, and so every contact we have from, whether it's from open houses or, you know, any, anybody who buys or leases or, or whoever gets planted into there. Um, and then I also use a, a system called Outbound Engine. Um, and they've been wonderful. Uh, so it's what does that it, do it, for it, you? Uh, it, I also have my contacts in there. Um, mm -hmm. And they ha have linked our Facebook business page our LinkedIn and then email lists with coordinated marketing campaigns. And this is not all just, oh, wow. hey, you know, uh -huh. here's how to buy a house, how to buy a house, how to buy a house. It's stuff that people are much Other more likely to click on, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, uh, you know, staging tips. Here's your Pantone color of the year, you know, you know, and, and it'll coordinate a campaign. So Monday I have something go out on Facebook, Wednesday, something that's related to that but a little different goes out on LinkedIn and Friday a third thing kind of in that same category will blast out in an email. So um, your clients think he is so connecting with us regularly. Here's something else from Matt. Here's something else from Matt. They're similar 
the difference. Of course, and everything that goes out in the email, you don't get the whole thing, right? You have to click read more, and it'll send them, them straight to our website. And of course, the website has view listings, you know, and mm -hmm. gets traffic back through to the HAR portal, and it all kind of ties together. So. Now tell our students again the particular software you just um, That system was called Outbound Engine. Um, and I like it a lot in comparison to some of the other programs that do similar mm -hmm. things because Outbound is based out of Austin. Um, mm -hmm. And so the content I feel like is actually curated to people who are living in our in Texas, Texas area, right? Exactly. Um, as opposed to, you know, Anywhere. coming from Boston mm -hmm. and, and it's all about snow and, and winter cookies and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Adrian said from the get-go, you hired a transaction, I mean, an assistant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of our customers, our students, they're thinking, wow, from the get-go, she brought in someone to help her. Why did you make that decision from the very beginning? Well, I am not a huge tech person. I'm very social. Um, I like to be out there, I like to be on committee, uh, committees, I like to volunteer, I love to go to church, um, I love to be a part of my kids, my grandkids, I just am on the go all the time. So to understand the tech part of marketing, which I'm so impressed, I mean, <laughs> so I went to an assistant and I said, I will get someone very capable of what you're looking for, I will pay you at, at closing. And so therefore, I knew I had to close. And so to keep that, that good assistant, and that was just a huge driver. And the marketing part, she does everything, um, takes care of my social media, uh, takes care of when I have open houses, she's gonna get it sent to the right uh, group that would receive that on Facebook. So she does anything she tells me to do. I know Cinco de Mayo, she said, Hey, a local restaurant near where you're doing the open house just gave you five free quesos. Give them out at open house. Got it done and put your business card on it. And so whatever, you know, her mark, she's very good at marketing. She majored in marketing and she takes care of the tech part. Um, I need to get better at tech. Um, Keller Williams is coming out with some more simplified tech um, uh, areas called Command, which is awesome so I will look forward and, and she's growing in that too so we're gonna grow in it together and learn I was gonna say she could grow into that yeah do yes. what she does best yeah yes and you just keep doing the face-to-face -face correct personally. and the great thing is she had kids and wanted to stay home with kids and it allows her she can do so much at night after her kids have gone to bed mm -hmm. whereas I'm at the forefront from the time I wake up all day long mm -hmm. Uh, being out there the face-to-face -face, and she's doing behind the scenes so it's very helpful so you observed a lot of agents for a long time and decided yeah this is what I want to do and you've been very successful when you chose to go into it full-time can you tell our new people today what are maybe two or three or four whatever tips from the very beginning that they can do the day they get that license what are some things some tasks they can do right away to jump start their business Matt? uh yeah uh, so one automate everything okay big tip right from, uh, the beginning. If, from the beginning if you can automate everything you know so companies like the one i was just talking about mm -hmm. I was a marketing major and I'm 25. That helps I should be the social media expert, right? Uh -huh. Well, I can spend a lot of time scrolling through Instagram and Facebook, but when it comes to posting our own stuff out there, something just takes it out of me. Okay. Um, so I knew that wasn't a strong suit. Uh -huh. So we, you know, I pay a small fee every month and it's all wonderfully packaged and tied up and done for me, right? Don't have to think about it anymore. Now it's I have time done. to do something else, mm -hmm. automate everything. Um, and then two is kind of cliche, but you know, don't be a secret agent, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I have, I have an advantage that I don't have kids to go home to or too many responsibilities after mm -hmm. work type thing. Um, cause my, my family's still very small. It's me. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm able to, you know, like you be out there out in the world. So 
I'm a super social person, and that means I, I can, can have tell. a different group of people to be with every night. You know, I'm I'm I can be that extroverted. He's a nice guy. Uh, so that can be you know trivia on Tuesdays and Bible study Wednesdays and some some golf or something Thursdays and and you know. And all of those groups of people are people that you're with and you're seeing and you're face to face and you're talking to all the time. Hey, what do you do? How's it been? I'm your realtor, right? I, um, I get business that way all the time. Do you believe? Do you like branded wear? Do you believe in wearing branded wear, or are you like? Uh, as long I, as I, I have my name badge. I'm I ready. have my name badge, okay. and and I haven't, you know, I haven't invested in any embroidered shirts or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I see folks in them, and I think it could be good. Mm -hmm. I'm. I, I'm I'm con heavily contemplating just the uniform, right? Just go the the Zuckerberg route and have my one, you know, get order seven branded polos and right. just have one every day, right? <laughs> Never have to think about it in Can't the morning. Think about it. Um, Everything the same color. And that might fit into my automate everything <laughs> advice, See, you, you know. Have an idea today. <laughs> <laughs> well, most definitely the takeaway from that, and I have to say, Matt, every interview every month. Uh, someone always says, don't be a secret agent. And that is just so strong and so powerful. And yet, I want our students to be sure and write down, it means that you have to be out, you have to be seen, you have to let your friends know that you're now a real estate professional. And my goodness, he said, Bible class, trivia, whatever else, he's involved. And I know you heard from Adrian. I heard church. I heard volunteer. I heard charity. And um, you have to be involved because mm -hmm. people love it when they can give business to those that give back to the community. For of course. Sure. Yeah. What about business planning? We can call it business planning. We can call it goal setting. Do you mind sharing with us what your business planning is like, Matt? Yeah, um, I am kind of a spreadsheet guy too. Okay. Uh, so I have this. I, why you looked at me like you were apologizing? <laughs> uh, well, That's a good um, thing. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's not like I learned this anywhere, uh -huh. right? Um, so, so I have I have this wonderful spreadsheet that that started off my first year as just goals, right? Um, and I had very little idea what I was doing or how to plan because I, I had never had a closed year of production before. So right. I was like, oh, yeah, I think I would someone. like to make this much money, exactly. right? Start from the top, kind of work Start down. Do what is that going to look like? Okay, with, with average sales prices and average lease prices, you know, and I have it month by month broken out. Okay, I'm going to have a, a buyer here and a buyer here and a, two leases a month every here, 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 here. Uh, and, and so I, that was just kind of goals, right? And then I copied and have that immediately below it with actual production that I update as the months go by, right? So mm -hmm. I can see in real time, okay, I'm this percentage to my goal for the year, and this month was really bad in comparison to what I thought I was gonna do, I have some catching up to do. Or this month was really good, and I can maybe go on a vacation next month type thing, That's you know? That's huge, because um, you're keeping up with it monthly. And I have kept that going since I got my Which license. Um, and so I've actually always overachieved on that goal. So uh, that's that's been, it's cool to see. It feels lofty, right? But when you can see it and you can track your real-time progress, um, it feels way more achievable because it's a lot more piecemeal. And at the end of the mm -hmm. year, you're not surprised if you didn't reach your goal and when you do reach your goal so many people say well how do I know how do I know how to do a business plan and how do I put it together and I can do goals but how often do I do them and I know that our big humanitarian in Houston mattress max says if you do your goals daily, then your goals are done monthly for you, which can also just turns into your annual goals. But the fact you're keeping up with your business is wonderful. 
because the worst thing that can happen is you say, well, I need whatever, $60,000 to pay my bills, and this is what I need. But if you don't keep up with it when you first start getting those commissions, you have no idea where you are, and then you spend money that you really don't have right now to spend. Right. So congratulations on doing that from the beginning. Even if it's just a piece of paper and it's written out this way, I need this much money, this is how I'm going to make it work, and I would absolutely be remiss if I didn't say that's also in my 30 Days to Success. In the book, it starts out with how to do a budget, how to do your business plan. Tell me, with your accounting background, how do you keep up with your business plan and budgeting? Adrian. Well, so um, we do daily profit and loss and our P&L, and then at the end of the month we have our full month of profit and loss. And then I, looking at it, we go forward and say, okay, here's what our income was, here were our expenses, where do we need to focus um, our financial energy? So uh, just like recently, we decided to go on a 12-month campaign in marketing that we did not do last year, but we decided to focus on a group and gain market share. Um, and I had, we, we get lots of wonderful Keller Williams training. Um, people, panels will get up and share ideas. And I just realized I was not putting, I was not investing enough in my marketing. And although I, I stay very busy, um, I really want to grow a team with my family. And I knew that if I could market to this particular market share, once I get others with me, as you said, your team kind of grows, um, we'll be able to keep up with the business that we'll get from that. So, so you're also doing daily. Daily that daily brings on you know. the, yeah. The, and you know where you stand all the time. All the time. And, I, and then I do a a yearly uh, prediction or budget of what my business is going to do. So like Matt said, I know that month if I've met it. If I haven't, I need to catch up and do what needs to get done for the, next, the month. next month so that I meet my goal at the end of the year. So I'm sure the students saw me like thumbing through the catalog. I just wanted to show you that page, 30 Days to Success. It has the outline that you need to get your business plan going. But um, I love it that you keep up with it regularly and then you always know where you stand. So what is a day in the life of Adrian like? You wake up in the morning and be sure to write this down, students. This is what a rookie of the year, just her first year in business, her first 12 months, this is what she does every day to move to the top right away. Well, when I open my eyes, the first thing I do is give thanks for the beautiful day. And so that I have Thanksgiving going into my full day. I have a positive attitude. I'm ready to get up and get started. I go, my very first thing as I wake up in the morning is what's been the most beneficial to me is my calendar. If it's not written down, it does not exist. So every night before I go to bed, I look at my calendar of the next day of what I'm going to need to do. Uh, my, my best scenario would be I get up and I start my emails, my texting, wait till it's a decent time of the day, and then I start my phone calls um, through um, mostly, mostly people I know. Uh, and, and, of course, my open house. And what are those phone calls like? What those, do you say? Mm -hmm. So, hey, uh, the, especially the very first year, hey, it's Adrian. I wanted to let you know that um, I'm not doing tax accounting anymore. I've gotten my real estate license, so I'm going to start selling real estate. Please consider me if you're thinking of selling, buying, or investing in real estate. Uh, you can call and say that. You can write and say that. You can email and say that. You can text and say that if you want to. Letters are very helpful. Um, so from there, I am up, and I do this from home. A lot of people go into the office and work from the office, but I start my day off in my office at home. 
And then from there I go out with my appointments and I'm showing or making listing appointments, try to get a listing appointment when I'm making my phone calls to go by, look at their house, kind of talk about what the market's doing right now. Hey, can I send you any information about the comps in your neighborhood? Um, I just always try to give them something that they can benefit for and that I can help them with. So that's just in the morning. From there, I go um, either on my appointments, make a lunch date, um, go to my volunteers. I support a, um, the um, swim team uh, in Plano. I'm their sponsored realtor. And so I'll get with them, we'll market through their website. It's just, a, it's just a day of constantly doing something in real estate because I, I had found that um, a quote from Sir Isaac Newton said, an object in motion stays in motion. And if you just wake up and sit back and you're not really doing anything in real estate, your day does not get going in real estate. This is a true job. I mean, it's as if I was going into an office. You're waking up and getting that object in motion, and it just grows and it builds. You took the words right out of my mouth. You're operating it like a business, mm -hmm. and you're getting up and doing some of your business at home and then taking off for the day, but operating it as a business. And she also gave us the perfect example of not being a secret agent. You're calling people, talking to people, and I love it. The calling or the face-to-face -face is the personal way of marketing, which works so much better than impersonal. Mm -hmm. But we need it all. We need it all. Mm -hmm. That was a great example. Thank you. What about you, Matt? Tell us about your day. Uh, I agree so much with everything that Adrian just said. Uh, I think it's so important to treat this like a, a, a you know you're going into your nine to five and then it, sometimes it lasts until 10 or on the weekends uh but as a base right mm -hmm. um that was that was just how i i knew i had to do this i cannot wake up and start my day from home um i i might i might do some some emails and mm -hmm. things from the iphone just mm -hmm. while i'm eating my yogurt in the morning type mm -hmm. thing but if i stay at the house you need a real office after setting. 9 a.m mm -hmm. i'm staying at the house all day right um so that that can't be me and, and mm -hmm. i know that mm -hmm. um so i go to the office every day and try to be there by 9 or 9 30 depending on what is happening uh mm -hmm. business wise in the morning um and I also think that's really important for a lot of folks if they're trying to make that decision on mm -hmm. are they going to work from home or are they going to work from an mm -hmm. office. There is so much knowledge and wisdom from the veteran agents mm -hmm. who spend their time in the office, mm -hmm. right? Um, that even if you don't have a lot to do that day uh, and, and you're, you're thinking, I, I don't have a lot on my plate today, what, what can I do? If you have a common space bullpen area or whatever for your office for you know you're not an office agent the experienced agents who are there and they see you every day in there grinding um, help you. There they you. will respect that so mm -hmm. much right and then when they get that call and they say hey I have there are some buyers that want to go show this listing of mine but I'm already going to be out on appointments today I need somebody to take it they'll walk into the bullpen and you're the person that's always been there, right? Um, and I've been invested in by those other agents so many times, um, that's just the best advice that I think I can give. Uh, so I go to the office until I can't stand being there anymore, right? Um, <laughs> and then uh, whatever evening activities or showings or things that I have, um, I'm, I'm comfortable working a little later than, than I think a lot of folks are, so. Um, you know, a lot of your clients are going to be able to show. Pretty remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some of our students, our customers are listening to you going, oh my gosh, he has the freedom of time, and yet he says, I stay at the office as long as I can. As long as I'm comfortable, as long right? As long as you're comfortable, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, doing stuff, not just that you're there. Right. And then you don't have to be afraid to, um, I think that's the glory of this business, is if you need to take an afternoon, but you're going to go do something social, 
that's work, right? Yes. Um, so and you, don't you know, feel guilty. You, you you need to you need to go run some errands Thursday mm -hmm. afternoon. But you know that Thursday night you're going to go to bingo and there's going to be 12 people there that you can prospect. That's work. That's uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's absolutely right. It's all. And that's what makes it fun is so many people say, this isn't work. This is fun because they're doing it the right way. So do either of you have a coach that you work with? And I love what you said about experienced agents in the office. Um, I know Adrian said she shadowed early on, mm -hmm. shadowed top producers. I heard a phrase just this week about a new person literally can stand on the shoulders of an experienced person and learn so much through observation. But um, what exactly, um, not exactly, but I asked the question, do you have a coach? Do you have a specific coaching person or series either yes. one of you yeah, yes so um, I do I have a coach and I'll tell you that I would not have been able to close as many closings as I had without Keller Williams and they provided my coach to mm -hmm. me at the very beginning so um, and then later you go into you know hiring your own coach who fits best for your business but I think a coach is really important because when the first thing that you're doing to make your business successful right now is right where you are at Champions School. Um, that is giving you everything you need to pass your national and state exam. And then you're going to go in and find your brokerage that fits your personality properly. Uh, with that, where I picked Keller Williams Plano and the one, why I picked it is because of the coaching the mentoring, the support, the culture, and without it, I promise you, I would not have known that one to four contract is 10 pages, and you're just kind of writing it up and not really knowing exactly how to fill it out properly, but with that coach, I was sending it to that coach after I wrote it, and they would circle, you need to fill out this, and this, and this, and I would take it back and I would do it again and then I'd submit the offer and we would go under contract. But um, I think it takes a coach, especially at first, to guide you well, all the time uh, to help you grow your business, but at first to help you guide your business at understanding it. That you're doing it correctly. Correctly, yeah, yes. So I think Adrian sort of explained the role of a trainer or a manager in the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. to make sure that when you're new, they look over these legal forms that you're having people sign to mm -hmm. make sure they're all accurate and up-to-date and good. And, um, and I just want to let everybody know what Adrian said about whatever company fits your personality. There are so many excellent companies. And I regularly have new students say, Rita, can you just please, please, please tell me what is the best company? And first of all, individual. I want everybody to know my answer is they're all good. Because if they're bad, they don't stay in business very long. But they're all good, and yet mainly the true response is what works for Adrian may not be perfect for you. Mm -hmm. What works for Matt may not be perfect for you. But we always recommend three different companies that everyone interview with. If you don't find your choice, then go on to four, go on to five. And then we're coming up in October to our career fair where we'll have 50 to 80 brokers at each location. That's awesome. And our new people get to walk around and meet and greet. But what about yourself, Matt? Do you have a coach uh, or how do you... Keep yourself. Yeah, so I don't have a, a separate paid coach or, or anything, but um, you know, I am on a team with uh, my father who's been doing real estate for 19 years now. He uh, is a coach, and he for sure. is he is my coach, right? Uh, uh -huh. But we keep our door open pretty regularly, and I think he's a lot of other folks in the office's coach as well. You know, mm -hmm. people feel comfortable coming to ask him questions, and he's exactly. such a good guide and mentor. 
Uh, but I've also known, you know, my current manager and our previous manager since I was 12, right? Uh, so I've always felt comfortable that I have someone to call in a pinch if I need it. Um, it's helpful that I can call my father and ask those questions and he's he's yeah. willing to answer them because he's going to get paid a little bit of money for me to make the right choice. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that mentorship and everything is so, so, so important. And if you don't have that, you have to go try and find it. Mm -hmm. It is very important, mm -hmm. especially on the front end. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you, Rita, one thing that I've, I did not mention and I want to thank you for, for Champions, is they allow brokerages, just where you are now and you know it, they allow these brokerages to come in and share their business model. And uh, over lunch, or over breakfast. lunch, yeah, or breakfast. And they really give you some uh, great ideas and, and ideas of whether you really want to go interview them to be your broker. Um, and I'll tell you, I probably interviewed. 10 to 12 brokerages. Um, I was, I thought they were all really good. I mean, I really thought they were all good. And in the end, um, I don't know if you know Bob Baker. He, yes. Yeah, yes, he helped write the one to four on the Broker Lawyer Committee. And um, he is our managing broker. And I was at a Collin County Association of Realtors for the installation of the president. And he comes over to me and he gives me a hug and you know welcomes me and we're there. And I'm by this girl that I just talked to, she told me she's on the biggest team in Texas and I'm just like so impressed. And he comes over and she goes, who was that? And I said, that's our broker. And she goes, oh, you know your broker, but your broker knows you? And I was like, <laughs> yes, I said, I just absolutely, you know, was appalled because Bob has helped you know, I don't know if that's good or bad if your broker really knows you, but <laughs> <laughs> I say good. <laughs> He's a swell person. We've known Bob for a long yes. time in the Plano area. Um, so, do you take time off for yourself? Do you like to vacation? Or did you say, I'm not going to take a vacation until I hit this particular goal? How do you feel about taking time off? I travel a lot, uh, way more than I probably should. Uh, but like I said, no, if you can find a way a to make time. an excuse <laughs> that it's work, then it's work, you know? Um, so uh, we have, I'm a big college football fan. Uh, we have Baylor season tickets, and so we're in Waco six times a year for you that. Are working um, when you're but, there. you know, there's a pretty big Houston fan base that is up there, exactly. right? So if I run into folks or, you know, outgoing referrals, right? Mm -hmm. I manage a tailgate out there, so that's a lot of people that I get to come in contact with it's and shake hands. Um, my girlfriend's kind of a travel bug, so we, you know, once every three or four months or so, probably just go somewhere for the weekend. But uh, I think right. it's really important to refresh yourself a little it bit is. and, and come you back revigorated. Great new you know? ideas to come back and really add to your business. You know, Good and again, you. I'm not a tax accountant, but if you were to, before <laughs> buying your plane tickets, find another office of your broker or a class being offered mm -hmm. somewhere else, mm -hmm. and then you go exactly. to take that class, and it happens to be in Seattle, uh, just you know, talk to your accountant. We have <laughs> certainly customers that go to our San Antonio or our Dallas, they go to other regions to take their CE because it's a little getaway. And then it's obviously education. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Do you and Terry travel very much? Do you take time off? Yes, we do. Um, in fact, just last week, we were in Gulf Showers, Alabama. We go there every year with our family. Twenty, Just the 21 of us. We have five kids, seven grandkids. <laughs> it's pretty quaint. Uh, two beach houses. And what I found with real estate that was so different from going to the, uh, like a nine-to-five job is that it's incorporated in your life. Uh, yes, we were at the beach. Yes, I was focused on family. But I got up in the morning and there were some things I did on the computer before I ever came out exactly. of our room. Always. And then once I was done with that, I am focused on family, focused on fun for that vacation. So, but you just, you just kind of carry it with you and it's, it's fun. I just enjoy it. It allows you to be on vacation and yet carry on your business. Yeah, yes, very often. absolutely. Don't you love it when she says yes? <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to leave here today going yes. It's, it's so cute. I know you've probably heard that forever. Oh, thank you. 
Well, I want to most definitely thank these two for being incredible and have shared so many wonderful ideas with us today. And uh, that being said, I do have another question for each of you. Looking back now over these two years, is there something maybe you would not have done at the beginning uh, had you known two years later that it would help you or not? Is there anything that maybe you would have done more of at the beginning now that you see after these two years what really worked for you? Does that come across with any ideas or uh, Yeah, I guess, you know, so I think it can be really overwhelming to get into this business and there are so many different avenues for prospecting and trying mm -hmm. to find your people. Um, and I, there's probably different schools of thought on this, but I'm not sure that you should focus on all of them right away, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, you know, you, you sometimes can hear, okay, well, you've got to be cold calling your expires and you've got to go be knocking on doors for FISBOs and you've mm -hmm. got to be doing your, your mailers and you have to do your open houses and then you need to take the lease leads and you, and no one has time, right? So you give a little bit of effort to a lot of things mm -hmm. and some of them aren't going to pan out with just a little bit of effort, right? Um, so I think I probably wish I would have taken a few of those where I knew I wasn't going to give all of the time I needed to make it happen mm -hmm. and just said maybe that's not my thing or maybe I'll be able to do that later when I have a little bit more freedom and I'm gonna focus in on these two or three avenues right uh, become an open house queen you know that would have been awesome so much. 50 percent of her business from open houses that is great advice because you're gonna be told certainly by your trainer your manager you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to fill out a contract yet correctly. <laughs> so that's great advice. Look at the two or three from what's offered and just really be a specialist and give it your all. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Adrian? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I think that um, you'll find what you're really good with and um, go forward with that with that I'm trying to think I'm kind of like Matt when, when if when I first started I didn't exactly know which path I was going to go because there were so many paths to go so I had to really look at myself within and say just be yourself just be yourself and I think that's why uh, we have a, a training course called ignite and they give you every different avenues of growing your business um, which is why I went open houses because that sounded very social and I liked that I liked being able to visit with people and hear their needs so that's what I would recommend is who are you where do you think you can grow the best and even if you come across that gosh real estate uh, you know I'm not going forward like I'm, I'm hearing the success of Matt with the leases which is amazing or some of my successes and some weren't but if you're not there's a place for you in real estate I mean there there are title companies lenders there are uh, marketing specialists no matter what you do you can find a place in real estate to grow and succeed or and be, a tr uh, be a buyer's agent. Or buyer's a, agent. Be, be an trans. instructor at Champions. I mean, <laughs> that career alone would be we amazing. We require five years experience. <laughs> get your resume started. <laughs> we get a number of those resumes every day. Okay. And because Adrian brought it off, I know, or brought it up in jest, but in order to be an instructor, you do have to have five years experience in whatever that area is and then three years of training mm -hmm. but there are a number of areas and you know what I love to tell new people is very often you'll have the opportunity to be a buyer's agent for a successful agent that just can't get to all those buyers yes. and most definitely Matt has brought to forefront that leasing can be very lucrative and is very lucrative so there is a niche for everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a niche for everyone yes. and if you like what you're doing 
and it's obvious these two very much love what they're doing, you'll always make money at it. Mm -hmm. uh, starting my business 35 years ago, money ended up being the result of doing something I love. Very much. And I can tell that these two love their business and it says why they're successful. So, next month we have two longtime superstars that specialize in the luxury market. I have Diane Kink with the Kink team out of the Woodlands, Texas. And as well, I have Monica Fabio from the Monica Fabio Group, and she is with Cooper Sotheby's in Austin. They're going to talk about staying in business, longevity in the business, building your team, but how to sell the luxury home. And I'm excited to have these two ladies with us next month on September the 19th. We have our awesome book, Successful Tendencies of Real Estate Champions. It's only $14.95. It's at all, at, our, at all of our campuses. We have superstars in here that have been here currently and their stories. And we take bullet points, take away of how they became successful in real estate. It is a wonderful guide to give you other ideas on getting business. I want to remind everyone, we have real estate, we have loan, we have appraisal, we have inspection. I love that Adrian mentioned other areas of real estate. And right next door, we have um, our business etiquette being taught. And Christy Stratton is our wonderful instructor for that. And she's doing it via live broadcast. Don't forget, it's all about you whether it's classroom, live streaming like today, or online, we have every delivery that is for you. And we so appreciate your business. I always say, and I believe it completely, without your business, we don't have one. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a champion. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Rita. With Keller Williams Plano, and thank you, Matt Shelf with Caldwell Banker. Thank you. In the Sci Fair area of Houston. And um, more success to both of you. Thank you for, you for well. helping with that. You're welcome. We appreciate it.